Hello and welcome to Government with Dr. Turner. Today we're going to take a look at different interpretations of the Second Amendment's meaning. The Second Amendment is primarily concerned with the right to bear arms. In the early years of our new republic, standing armies were viewed as dangerous and unnecessary. Most colonists distrusted them and many viewed standing armies as a threat to liberty. They believed that national stability would come from local militias. Therefore, the original intention of the Second Amendment was to counter the potentially tyrannical power of standing armies. Support for the Second Amendment today often brings forth this anti-tyranny argument, even though today's army is under civilian control. Hunting and gun sports are part of American culture. A major contention in favor of protecting American gun rights in the modern era is that guns remain necessary for self-protection. For many, the bottom line is that private gun ownership is none of the government's business. Yet many are opposed to Second Amendment rights today. They argue that the need to keep and bear arms was related to the need for militias which are no longer in use today. They point out that countries with stricter gun control have less violence and fewer gun deaths. Interest groups that support Second Amendment rights are strong and active, so there has been only minimal national legislation in this area. The Brady Bill in 1993 required background checks, but some provisions have been struck down by the courts. The 1994 Crime Bill included a ban on semi-automatic weapons, but it was allowed to expire. In 1995, gun control advocates sought to make it illegal to carry weapons near a school, but this was struck down by the courts. Where does the Second Amendment stand today, particularly in the process of incorporation? In 2008, the Supreme Court upheld an individual's right to bear arms, regardless of the existence or use of local militias. Since that case was decided in the District of Columbia and not in a state, the court ruled again in 2010 confirming that states could not infringe on the right to keep and bear arms. Let's review. The Second Amendment was initially meant to counter the possible threat of standing armies to liberty. Most recently, the Supreme Court has upheld an individual right to bear arms and has ruled that states may not unreasonably infringe upon this right.